Psalm 63 is a psalm of David where, when he was in the wilderness of Judea. The Hebrew meaning of wilderness is an arid desert area where crops cannot grow. The wilderness served the purpose of a place away from public's view where God could purpose or prepare his servant for his plan and purpose. David, the anointed king, found himself twice in the wilderness setting as a fugitive, fleeing for his life. King Saul, by the choice of man, was troubled with an evil spirit in his backslidden state. Through pride and jealousy of David's success, sought to kill him. King Saul's dismi dismise, demise was his disobedience to God. The prophet Samuel declared, because he rejected the word of the Lord, God rejected him from being king. It was a hard lesson that obedience is better than sacrifice. That wasn't bad enough. King David, by the choice of God, a man after his own heart, had his own son Absalom seek to overthrow him. After stealing the hearts of the people, Absalom stirred an uprising of rebellion. This forced a weeping David to flee Jerusalem into the wilderness for his life, representing and typing Christ as the rejected king. In the New Testament, John the Baptist, Matthew 3, and Jesus, Matthew 4, each had their wilderness experience. John the Baptist, as the voice of one crying in the wilderness, in the spirit and power of Elijah, foran the coming word. His simple message was, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He declared of one coming after him who is mightier, whose shoes he, was, shoes he was not worthy to bear. The one who would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus, the word made flesh, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus did not sin in temptation because he overcome the devil by the Word of God. This is the same method believers have today to overcome by the Word of God. Can you imagine King David hiding in caves, but longing, thirsting, seeking, and desiring to see God's power and glory, so as I've seen thee in the sanctuary? What a sad state to be in, unable to go to church, unable to be in church. And yet today, within the message, there are those who advocate staying home from church, press play and disobey the prophet, who clearly states, if Christ is in your heart, you can't wait for those church doors to open. To further add insult to injury, they determine they can have church in their homes, hence their home church. But don't doesn't that sound sweet? Home sweet church? No, friends, it does not. It's worse than sucking on a lemon all day long. And what does the word say? We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching, Hebrews 10.25. Also in 1 Corinthians 21, it says, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Ephesians 4, 11 says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. God ordained the five-fold ministry. God also gave the bride a dispensational vindicated word prophet of Malachi 4 and other scriptures. Praise God. It is not a one-fold ministry only. God, however, never ordained a mechanical device or a tape player to dispose or replace a Holy Ghost anointed minister or pastor. No, any more than God ordained a new cart to move the Ark of the Covenant. God's ordained method was to have the Levitical priesthood shoulder the Ark. To disobey that brought death. What spirit, with their orders, with their orders from their headquarters, would close the church doors to ministers at best allow silent prayer and use the building as a museum of relics, all that without government intervention. For the bride, the headquarters is glory. Neither are we to elevate, worship, or idolize the prophet, the pastor, or any man of God, including your favorite superstar preachers you stream. Men of God are human. It is God who is infallible. Let us promote our lovely Lord Jesus Christ above any man. Let's not garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Let's point to the empty tomb in Jerusalem. Remember the book of the month, the token? 
with the Holy Spirit, which is the author of the word, you have discernments of spirits. Anything contrary to the word of God, any evil spirit, wrong action, or false belief that would grieve God's Holy Spirit is not of God. This is Antichrist in spirit, anti-word anti by the Holy Scriptures, and anti-message by the light and revealed truth for our day. It's little wonder if you leave the word, not only will you backslide, you can end up believing anything in deception to manifest the seed of discrepancy or receive a false anointed one or prophet that comes in direct opposition to the will and word of God. Our gathering together will result in our catching away one day. The true fivefold ministry will point people to Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life to Calvary and the finished works of the Lord Jesus. In simplicity, it will be the perfect word ministered that will glorify the Lord Jesus, birth souls into the kingdom, and quicken life in the hearts of every germatized seed of God. In conclusion, Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the defining asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrows, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart.